Ancient underground cities around the world, were they an antipode to the world that the Archons imposed on us? And here I have pictures of Darren Kuyu in Turkey and also Longu Caves of China, but we have underground labyrinths and cities all over the world. There's even reports of underground tunnels connecting Scotland all the way through Europe and even through Greece and Turkey all the way down to the Giza pyramids. We're living at the end of the 12,000 year cycle. The transitional period between cycles is always associated with serious cataclysms. At the end of the last period, an event on a global scale took place, a geological catastrophe that caused the flooding of a large island in North Atlantic at the, on the uh, island of Atlantis. And now we see that the cyclical cyclicity is repeating itself. And at this time we are living and we're already observing today how the planet trembles from climate events that our civilization has not yet seen. But we need to know the truth and history and based on it, make decisions that will affect the future fate of the living of humanity. Let's rewind time into the past and unfold the entire chain of events that took place on the planet after the deluge, the great flood. In Egyptian mythology, legends about the Golden Age, or Zep Tepi, have been preserved. The time of the spiritual rebirth of mankind, Zep, and time, Tepi, the first beginning of cosmic existence. Zep Tepi means the first time or the first moment from the beginning of the birth of a new civilization. At that time, people who aspired to spiritual development remained on Earth, and the Atlanteans, along with their technocratic development, were expelled into the dungeons. Until now, there are numerous testimonies of underground cities and temple complexes. Darin Kuyu is an underground city in modern Turkey, and this is Darin Kuyu here one of the uh, fabulous constructions. Underground city in modern Turkey, 12 floors go deep into the earth, with all halls and tunnels having excellent ventilation. Scientists believe that only a small part of the territory is open, so there's more to be discovered. There are hypotheses about 20 floors not yet discovered. The ancient Longu Caves in China have an area of more than 30,000 square meters, 320,000 square feet. What technologies were used to develop these caves and carry out architectural measurements is unknown. Also, the territory of China, there are huge mysterious Huashan caves with many stone columns and a unique structure of processed materials. It's not known where the excavation stone went because it would be enough to pave the way for 240 kilometers. All this suggests that at that time technologies were used that are unknown to modern uh, mankind. The underground labyrinths of the Chincanas tunnels near the ancient city of Cusco in Peru are very interesting. These are underground streets with many branches and traps. None of the adventurers dared to enter there without a coal of rope tied to the exit a coil of rope so they wouldn't get lost, of course. However, this did not help, and in the 1950s, over 200 people went missing. They searched there for the jewels of the ancient kings, which they heard about from the stories of Philippe Lamontier, a French caver who, by a, luck, a lucky chance, got out of these labyrinths of caves with signs of bubonic plague infection, holding a golden ear of corn in his hands, he died soon after, and the cob is still in the Lima Museum. And where these, dungeon, where these dungeons end, no one knows. They say that they lead to the very heart of the Andes, but many researchers agree that underground tunnels go even under the oceans and connect the continents. In the folklore of the South American people, there's a legend about snake people living in dungeons, reptilians in other words, they began to talk about them when speleologists began to disappear. We know that these snake people are reptilians or apexians, an alien race that enslaved humans in the past. Perhaps they went into the dungeons with the Atlanteans, but in any case, the underground tunnels 
were the place of bloody sacrifices. In Peru, not far from the, not far from the Nazca Desert, which is known for its drawings, which can only be seen from a bird's eye view. They're, they're actually glyphs, uh, carvings on the earth. There are caves in which stone pedestals similar to altars were found. The pedestals had gutters for blood flow, and some of the tunnels were filled with human remains, and they were so long that they went under the ocean. There are myths about underground gods in China, but an even more interesting legend exists among South American tribes. The legend tells about the Almighty Father of Humanity, who having completed the act of creation on earth, went to his underworld. This legend is an echo of knowledge about the supreme ruler of Atlantis, El, who already had tremendous opportunities, even if he endowed allotments and people all over the world with his sons and daughters. The world elite just comes from the world word El, and the children of El were considered gods, and they ruled almost the entire planet. And then Atlantis, it really was a developed civilization, to the level of which modern humanity has not yet reached. There are incredible masterpieces of underground art presumably made by their descendants in the dungeons of India. 6,000 years ago, there was a turning point in the history of mankind, and it was just 6,000 years after the death of Atlantis. And at this time of the Golden Age, the period of spiritual awakening of mankind was replaced by the consumer format of society in which we still live. We believe that the ancient Sumerians created the first cities and states, and this was a leap in the development of our civilization. But in fact, it was the loss of humanity and all spiritual foundations a person at this time ceases to live by spiritual values and takes on the guidelines of a consumer format. And as a result of this shift in priorities, people were displaced. And then the descendants of the Atlanteans who lived underground came out, and those who continued to adhere to the new way of society were forced to either move to other territories or go underground, often occupying the same caves in which the descendants of the Atlanteans had previously lived. One of the clearest examples of such a movement of people is the underground temple of Malta. It's believed that the world's oldest underground temple, the Hal Saflieni, Hypogeum of Malta, Hypogeum is a Greek word meaning uh, basement, began to be built earlier than 4000 BC. The most interesting thing is that it has egg-shaped caves that go deep into the earth. Historians believe that such an oval shape was created because at the time of the cult of Mother Earth reigned in Malta. They assumed that this form personified the female womb and meant fertility and childbearing. However, one must understand that such ideas about a female deity are caused only by the dominance of the materialistic consumer thinking format in the minds of modern people. In fact, the veneration of the divine feminine is associated with the spiritual development of the society of the distant past. And the power of creation is hidden precisely in the feminine, which has a sacred meaning. A stone figurine of a sleepy, obese woman found in the hypogeum spiritually personifies the feminine principle, which underlies the creation of the world and contributes to the spiritual transformation of man. Perhaps at some time there lived people who were really engaged in their spiritual development and had nothing to do with the Atlanteans. The Hypogeum chamber has many entrances, halls, traps, tunnels, stairs, steps, and other objects. The ancient underground temple resonates at a frequency of 110 gigahertz, which corresponds to the frequency of many ancient megalithic structures and has a huge impact on the psyche of people. It should be noted that endless tunnels were found in the depths of the Hypogeum, where people also disappeared. There is a known case of 30 school children together with teachers going on a cave tour there and vanishing without a trace. They say that a week before that they saw some incomprehensible hairy creatures that looked like people, but it's not known whether this is true or false. Thus, underground cities are a huge network of labyrinths located at various depths of planet Earth. 
and they are built using technologies that are not available to us today. Exploring these tunnels is very dangerous, so the entrances to them are sealed by the authorities. Maybe someone still lives there, but the most interesting thing is that at one time people were expelled there because they lived in consumerism, used magic, ritual sacrifices to gain infinite power on earth. Bankers, ar archons, world government, masons, Illuminati, Freemasons, these are all descendants of those who ruled this world for millennia during the time of Atlantis. Their rule has led to the fact that they were simply destroyed as an unnecessary branch of evolution of mankind. But today they have returned and regained strength. And look at the world we live in now. Wars, dominance of some over others, class inequality, consumerism, and most importantly, the lack of spirituality. This is an exact copy of the decomposed society of the times of Atlantis. And this is on Solask, but I just want to say that at one point I did find at a book fair, I bought a book uh, full of maps of underground tunnels found in Athens area. I, for the life of me, I have no idea where I put that book. But these were tunnels made by very, very ancient peoples. And the whole of the city of Athens is full of tunnels and underground things big enough to put to pass buses through. So who and why made these tunnels? Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.